Good morning and a happy new year to you all. Welcome to this reflection on our new year of 2021 with hopefully so much more to look forward to. Our reading for this morning is taken from John's Gospel, it's chapter 1 and it's verses 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning round, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. Now, the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we found the Messiah, that is, the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Well, you know, what an apt piece of scripture this passage from John's Gospel is for us today. Yesterday, we moved into a new calendar year, and tomorrow, we'll be moving into a new season of the church's year, the season of Epiphany. It's the time when we turn our thoughts to how Jesus was revealed to the world. And, you know, for a relatively short passage, there's a lot of revealing going on in it. It begins with John the Baptist's declaration to two of his own disciples that Jesus was the Lamb of God. Now, we don't know how long Andrew and his friend had been associated with John the Baptist, but as soon as John revealed who Jesus was to them, they went straight over to him and ended up spending the rest of that day in his company. Now, the next revelation came a little later when Andrew sought out his brother Simon and told him, we found the Messiah. Come and see for yourself. I always like to think of these events that John describes as great moments of epiphany, great revealing moments. John the Baptist revealing who Jesus really was and then sending Andrew and his friend over to meet him. Andrew declaring Jesus to be the Messiah and introducing his brother Simon to him. And Simon then becoming Peter, the rock on which the church will be built. But there's still one more revelation to come. And it's one that's nowhere near as obvious as the others, but in its own way, it's every bit as important. And it concerns the identity of Andrew's friends, that, that other disciple that John the Baptist directed over to Jesus. Who was this other friend and what happened to him? Well, there's one clue, I think, that points the way, and it's the detail that John the Gospel writer puts into that particular passage we read, describing how Andrew and his friend spent the day with Jesus, John tells us the exact time. It was the 10th hour, about four o'clock in the afternoon. And for many people, the only reason you'd put that kind of detail into something is because you were actually there yourself because 
You were Andrew's friend. You were John, the brother of James, the writer of this fourth gospel. And as Jesus calls the rest of his disciples and begins his ministry, it's Peter, James and John that tend to take the centre stage and they're there at all the big occasions. Andrew tends to just carry on quietly in the background, doing what he does best, bringing people to Jesus. When that question of how to feed a congregation of 5,000 people arose, it was Andrew who brought the boy with his loaves and fish to meet Jesus. When a group of Greeks expressed a desire to meet Jesus, once again, it was Andrew who brought them to him. So when we hear today how numbers in church congregations are falling, when we hear of shortages of priests, and when we hear of lack of money, well, perhaps what we need is a good dose of what my parents used to rely on as a cure for all ills. Perhaps what we need now is a good dose of Andrews. More of the people who discover who Jesus is and then work tirelessly to bring others to meet him too. The church grew, of course, from 12 disciples who were with Jesus and wanted others to know him. Can we, I wonder, learn to do the same and see our churches grow and thrive once again? Well, my prayer for 2021 is that Yes, we can, and yes, we will. So let me leave you with a prayer now. Father, we ask your blessing on our churches, and we remember before you all who have reached out in mission to tell of your love and your saving power. We pray now for preachers of the word and teachers of the faith, and we ask that we may all embrace the task of bringing others to know and to love you. In Jesus' name, Amen.